Welcome back everyone. I'm Brent Weinberg. Today we're going to talk about some additional spine tumor considerations. Today we're going to talk about mimics of intermedullary tumors. If you haven't seen the videos on the location-based approach or the intermedullary tumors, it's a great time to go back and check those out or go back and check them out when you're finished. Today we're going to talk about things in the spinal cord that can mimic tumors. Now there's a broad set of categories being vascular abnormalities, infectious or inflammatory abnormalities, demyelinating disease, and other treatment-related considerations. All of these things can look like tumors, and so we're just going to take a quick look at a couple of examples of things that can mimic intermedullary tumors. So our first mimic right here is a cord infarct. So if we look, we have a T2 abnormality, it kind of goes from C2 down into the upper thoracic spine. Maybe on your post-contrast imaging, you have a little bit of wispy enhancement, it doesn't really look like there's a focal mass-like component, even though the cord is a little bit expanded there. Uh, in this case, like if you do diffusion, and I know this is not great diffusion, but we don't see a lot of these, you can see this patchy abnormal DWI in the center of the cord there. And for the cord, anywhere where it's different from an adjacent segment of normal cord, that would be considered abnormal diffusion. And so if you see that and you have an acute onset of symptoms, you might think about an acute or subacute cord infarction, which is what the diagnosis was, that was made in this case was. So that's a nice mimic that you can see, cord infarction. Our second mimic that we're going to see here is sarcoidosis. At our institution, we see a lot of sarcoidosis. So it's definitely something to think about. In the modern era, sarcoidosis really is a great mimic. Like it can mimic a lot of things. You see something similar to what we had seen with some tumors here. We see some T2 abnormality in the center of the cord here. We have our pre and post contrast imaging. On the post contrast imaging, you have a little bit of enhancement, but the enhancement particularly is along the surface of the cord. Again, there's not a discreetly formed mass here, although the cord is a little bit expanded. Just keep in mind that it might be other things like some sort of inflammatory disease, or in this case, sarcoidosis. Our third mimic is going to be neuromyelitis optica. Now, neuromyelitis optica is a uh, long segment. Uh, transverse myelitis that's often associated with optic neuritis. It's often associated with aquaporin antibodies. In this case, what we see is on T2 and T2 fat set, we have a long segment abnormality. That's a two or three vertebral bodies kind of going from the cervical medullary junction down to about C4. It looks similar to that sarcoid case in the sense that the enhancement is somewhat superficial and along the surface of the cord. Again, mass effect and expansion are not big features there. The enhancement that you see are areas of active demyelination. Mimic number four, we see a patient with radiation myelopathy. This was a 56 year old that was having progressive weakness, but did have a history of mantle cell lymphoma. Now this one can be a little confusing. It's the upper thoracic spine. We have this long segment T2 abnormality going from about the you know, C6, C7 through the mid thoracic spine, maybe T6. On our post contrast imaging, it actually looks like a lot of those tumors we saw in the previous lecture, kind of broken enhancement, maybe some central necrosis. But if you look at this, the one thing you'll note is unlike the cases of tumors that we saw, like the GBMs in the previous lecture, there's not a whole lot of expansion, not a lot of mass effect there. In this case, the additional history that was obtained was that this patient had a history of irradiation of the upper thorax, uh, kind of the thymus and upper chest, and this area was in the field of view of radiation. So that you can get after radiation. So this was radiation myelopathy. It was treated with steroids and it improved. Always check the chart for better history. Like if you, you may have additional information that you don't know about. So take a look, especially in these weird spine cases. So it's a great uh, pearl that you can take with you. Mimic number five, we think about a syrinx or pre-syrinx. Syrinx is when you have uh, either expansion of the central canal within the cord or perhaps some edema around the central canal, and it's most often related to CSF flow abnormalities. In this case, in the mid-thoracic spine, we've got some uh, T2 abnormal area, like both uh, on FATSAT and non-FATSAT. We kind of see it there. If you take a look up and you look at the cervical medullary junction here, this was a patient who was 10 years old, has a Chiari malformation, like very low cerebellar tonsils here. What's happening in this case is that the CSF flow is uh, being 
um, abnormal because of the compression of the outflow tracts of the fourth ventricle here and the central canal at the cervical medullary junction. So in that case, CSF flow is being affected down here. So be sure to look at the rest of the spinal cord for any clue that you might get that you're dealing with a CSF flow abnormality. Finally, our last mimic is arachnoid adhesion. So speaking of uh, CSF flow abnormalities, here we have a T2 uh, fat saturated image. What you have here is you have, uh, you see, this is the spinal cord and what you see is the spinal cord contour is deflected here. And above that area of deflection, the spinal cord is expanded and has a T2 hyperintense almost cystic mass-like lesion in there. If you do a myelogram on this patient, so this is a CT um, myelogram, so there's been contrast injected into the CSF space, you see the same thing where the contour of the cord is abnormal. Now this, similar to the Chiari malformation, is causing abnormalities in CSF flow through the central canal. You get kind of a syrinx here. This is an arachnoid adhesion. So what happens is you get a web or a sort of uh, adhesion there in the arachnoid space. It changes the contour of the cord and it affects the outflow of CSF in the central canal. Uh, this is the scalpel sign and you can look that up. And uh, what's described is when the shape of the outer contour of CSF mimics a scalpel. And so you see the sudden step off in the contour of the cord. If you see that, think about an arachnoid web or adhesion. With that, I just want to summarize, like when you see these things within the spinal cord, there are several different pathologies that can look like tumors. We've seen a couple of examples here. History is a really useful factor. Like for instance, if you have an infarct, you're much more likely to have it as an acute onset. Disease at other sites can really be a useful clue as well. With sarcoidosis, you'll often have lymph node abnormalities uh, either in the chest, you'll have hilar nodes or other abnormalities elsewhere in the body. You might think about doing a chest CT or chest X-ray to look to see if you have disease elsewhere. In the case of syrinx that we saw, we had an example of cord obstruction elsewhere with a syrinx or kind of pre-syrinx in that mid-thoracic spine. So be sure you think about these things when uh, you're looking at things and considering them to be tumors. These are things that can definitely mimic tumors and you want to include them in your differential diagnosis. Just want to thank you for tuning into this quick lecture. On the next lecture, we're going to cover the intradural extramedullary lesions. We're going to take a look at that. Again, if you haven't seen the other spine tumor lectures, be sure to go back and check out the playlist and check out all those spine tumor lectures. Be sure to like the videos and subscribe to the channel so you get all the notifications or check us out on our website at learnneuroradiology.com.